Okay, enough silliness aside. This is the Caffeinated Bible. My name is David Paris, and this is part of my Espresso series where I try and give you short videos that help you dive deeper and quicker into your study and understanding of the Bible. And I've got a great tip for you today. If you love studying the Bible, learning about the history, the culture, and the archaeological research behind the Bible, then this is something right up your alley. Biblical Archaeology Review is a magazine that's published four times a year, and its goal is to bring cutting-edge archaeological results to the average reader. It is not written for a technical journal or specialist in the field. It's written for the average informed reader who likes to study the Bible and understand the background behind it. Each issue of Biblical Archaeology Review is packed full of charts, diagrams, and full color photographs that help you understand the articles that they're talking about. So in this sense, it's kind of a lot like National Geographic, but for Biblical Archaeology. Another thing that I really appreciate about Biblical Archaeology Review is they don't have a particular faith or theological agenda or religious agenda as to how they approach researching and presenting the evidence for the archaeology behind the Bible. They give you all the different sides and then allow you to make your decision as to which perspective you're going to take. And that's unique among many of the magazines that cover this sort of topic. For example, in the previous edition, they had an article by Joseph Garfinkel about a small little figurine that was excavated in Israel. And he contended that this was an early representation of the Jewish God Yahweh. In this current edition, you've got an article that responds to his research by three scholars that present a different perspective on it. That it is not Yahweh, but it's a different depiction. So you get both sides of the coin here as far as the research that's going on. Within every issue that they have, you can really expect a diversity of views. And I think this is one of the strengths of the article, is that you really get to see how the different scholars are working on these topics and what their conclusions are. Now, if you're interested in a subscription to Biblical Archaeology Review, I will have their website listed here, and also I will have a live link in the Show More section underneath the video. And you can click on that and you'll be taken straight to their website. Another strength to Biblical Archaeology Review that I really appreciate is they get the top people in the field to write the articles. For example, in the current edition, the main article is on excavation and reconstruction of Herod's fortress on the eastern side of the Dead Sea. Now, the author of this article is Jozo Voras. Now, he's Hungarian, and I know I am butchering the name there. So if somebody knows how to pronounce it better, you can put it in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate that. This is probably the citadel or the fortress where John the Baptist was imprisoned. Flavius Josephus mentions this, as well as the early church historian Eusebius. So this is a really fascinating article to kind of give you an idea of where John the Baptist's last days were and where he was imprisoned at. One of the strengths of Biblical Archaeology Review is that they take this cutting-edge research and they present it in a way that all of us can read and understand it. They don't present it with a load of academic jargon or anything like this. They really write their articles in a very clear and lucid form. Another feature of Biblical Archaeology Review you should understand is around 2006, they had another publication called Bible Review. They merged the two publications together. So in every edition of Biblical Archaeology Review, you have at least one good full-length article on a particular text or topic within the Bible. The current edition discusses the passage out of Deuteronomy chapter 21, where if your son is a drunkard or a glutton, that he is to be stoned to death. And the author there shows that this probably isn't just because the guy eats too much or he drinks a little bit too much every now and then. There are cultural and religious ideas that go behind the passage that you need to understand as to why this injunction or command was so strong. And don't worry, I'm not going to spoil Rebecca Welton's article and tell you what her conclusions are. I'll let you read it on your own. There's a couple of other reasons why I highly recommend Biblical Archaeology Review. The first one is, is that in their first issue of every year, they include a section on digs of the year. These are archaeological digs that are looking for volunteers, and you can volunteer and go over and take place in an archaeological dig. One of my students has done this, and they thought it was the experience of their lifetime. They also expanded that, so now they have an entire website on digs that you can participate in. I'll include the link down below for their website, Find a Dig. 
And also, if you subscribe to their email service, I think about once a week they send out an email where they will have articles about biblical texts or archaeological digs that you can look at and get more informed on. And if you're a subscriber to the magazine, then you can actually read a great deal more on this or be taken to a page that has the entire article on it. It is well worth subscribing to their email service. And if you're the type of person that has more money and time than you know what to do with, Biblical Archaeology has a number of conferences around the world where the people speaking at it are some of the top archaeologists or people in that field. So it's worth knowing about their conference schedule because you never know, you might be able to take part in one of those conferences someday in the future. Who would I recommend a subscription to Biblical Archaeology Review to? Well, it would be someone who loves to read and go a lot deeper in their study of the Bible. The second thing is they have a passion for understanding the Bible, the culture behind the Bible, and the world in which the Bible was written. And once again, remember, I'll include links to the journal and find a dig and other material that they have underneath this video. I also need to clear up something from last week. I announced the winner to the English Study Version Bible. Unfortunately, the person I selected lives overseas in Asia, and I don't have the money to ship a heavy work like this over to him. I've had to contact him and let him know that I'm not able to ship it to his location. And what I've done is I've gone back and looked over the comments and I think Allison W's comment was really clear and concise and straight to the point. So Allison, if you're watching this video, please get in contact with me. I will have my email address in the show more underneath this video. Drop me a line, let me know your address and I will ship this right off to you. So that's this week hack for interpreting the Bible. It's Biblical Archaeology Review. Just about every issue that comes out, I find them fascinating to read, and I hope you do too. It's a great way to learn more about the history, the culture, and the archaeology behind and that surrounds the world of the Bible. Remember, if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe, hit the share button, give it a thumbs up, and if you've got questions or you want to leave an idea, drop a comment down below. Until next week, peace.